if you're hearing a lot about MFA bias passes or compromises lately, then chances are they don't really mean the MFA was bypassed, but instead that the MFA claim was stolen, commonly known as adversary or man in the middle attacks. This is where we literally give our intra or identity provider tokens to the bad guys. In this video, I'm going to show you how to defend against it using intra conditional access, and we'll do that at different levels of cost and security. So we're going to start in the admin center. And you know what? We'll tackle two different ways of defending against the adversary in the middle attack, both using conditional access. So let's head into protection, conditional access on the left here. I'm going to jump into my policies. Now I've got a bunch of policies in this tenant, but I'm going to filter to the ones that we're going to demonstrate as a way of defending. The first one will use the device state. So we're going to look to see whether the device is engine compliant or hybrid Active Directory joined. I kind of think of this as the lowest cost version of defending against this tech because I don't need to go out and buy any additional hardware. I can just use my existing on-prem AD or my existing engine licenses. And that kind of acts as a little bit of a proxy to say, hey, this is a corporate device. So the policy that we're going to build, I've got one I made earlier, we target our users. We choose the target resources. I always prefer to go for all cloud apps and then add an exclusion only if I really need to. So your mileage may vary, but that's a good starting point. And then there's a couple of ways to do this, but the way I like to do it is in my conditions. I basically filter out anything that isn't compliant or intra hybrid joint. So you'll see here conditions filter. We're going to exclude is compliant equals true or trust type equals Microsoft intra hybrid joint. And then for anything else, we're just going to block access. So what I'm saying is if you ain't on an engine compliant device or a hybrid joint device, you aren't going to get those uh, authorization requests through. So we're built up and we're good to go. I'll just triple check the user that I've scoped this to in my demo. It's Amy, the user that fell victim before. So what we'll do now is we'll head over to a device that matches that scenario and we'll see if that works. So I'm now on an engine compliant cloud only entry joint device. Uh, one way I can verify that is if I go into command prompt, I can run BS reg cmd slash status and it tells me a whole bunch of information but fundamentally what you're seeing is here I'm managed by MDM and the device is engine compliant. Now what we're going to do is uh, I'm just going to grab that URL or phishing lure URL, head over to Edge. Let's visit that on our managed device and let's see what happens. First off, you'll see Edge doing that typo protection. So it does give me a little bit of warning up there. That may not always be disabled depending on your environment. All right, so it's, you'll notice it didn't do SSO. You'll notice it's just kind of immediately asking me to authenticate. So let's uh, do that as our user. We'll punch in our password. All right, what did we just notice? Well, first off, ask me for my password, but then immediately says I can't access anything further. Didn't ask me for MFA of any type. Now we're gonna jump back to that Evil Jinx server and see what the implications of that are and talk through what happened. So we're back on that Evil Jinx device. Let's, uh, let's take on that sessions command and we can see a couple of things going on here. So we've now got that new authentication, same username, same password. We will notice no tokens were captured. So this isn't great, right? But at the end of the day, if the user has MFA now, uh, I still can't satisfy that MFA click. I just see the password. So I'm able to use that in something else that isn't Entra, but I'm, I'm not going to get very far as the attacker. So why has this happened? Well, really, there's a whole bunch of things going on under the hood to do with certificates. But fundamentally, it knew through that proxy that it wasn't actually Entra joined, slash engine compliant, and then it stopped it didn't allow me to proceed any further. Adversary cannot grab those tokens. But that is maybe not a one size fits all solution, right? So for example, what if I want to allow BYOD access reasonably common? Or maybe I want to allow folks to access on devices that otherwise I can't put in that hybrid joined slash engine compliant state. Well, in that case, I might want to use FIDO2 or passkeys. What we'll do now is we'll head back to the Entra Admin Center and we will look at how we can enforce those. Okay, so I got my list of conditional access policies. I'm going to go ahead and for demo purposes, disable the previous one, because uh, we're now going to say, hey, we're actually in the BYOD scenario. Let's run with that. So we're not going to do that device state check anymore, but I've built a new policy. I've just called it demo pass keys, targeting that same user, targeting all cloud apps. You'll notice I'm not filtering for devices or anything like that. But what I am doing is I have a grant control that checks for an authentication strength, and I have specified that that has to be one I built called passkeys. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on and I'll hit save. So what else do I need to know here? Well, 
On the left hand side of conditional access, you'll see this page called authentication strengths. And authentication strengths are where I basically take various types of authentication, put them in an or object and say, hey, if you satisfy any of these, then you get to sail on through. We chose a custom one I'd made called passkeys 502. And if I head into that, you'll see what I've done is I basically said, you will only be allowed to proceed if you present passkey 502 or a temporary access pass. Now you might want to subscribe to us because we are going to do a future video on temporary access passes and what they're all about. They're very useful for bootstrapping passwordless. So I think we're good to go here. Let's close this. What we'll do now is I'm going to give the conditional access policy a little bit of time to kick in under the hood. It can vary, but I'm going to give it another five minutes. Uh, and then we'll try authenticating as that user against that phishing URL and see if that protects us against adversary in the middle. Okay, so I'm now on my BYOD device. It's not hybrid joined or engine compliant. It's not the most secure device in the world, right? Because it's BYOD, but hey, we got to compromise sometimes. So for example, if I head into CMD on this device, I'll do that same command status. Uh, you can see there's nothing going on here. I'm just a standard work group device. Let's head to edge and let's assume I've been fished on my home device. I'll take that URL that we tried earlier, or lure that he's provided us. Let's punch that in and see what happens. Okay, so I logged in on this device in the past, so it's remembering my account, so I'll choose that. Could it ask me for my password? That's it, sign in. And you'll see, now it's asking me for a security key. So this is conditional access kicking in. It's saying, I don't really care about the MFA on your phone. Because that policy is specified an authentication strength of 502, we're going to require that. So what we're now seeing is this UI that pops up, this Windows security one. This is the operating system itself. I'll hit security key. It's already connected. So let's say put in a pin. Security keys typically have a pin that you require to unlock them in case you lose them or something like that. They're typically tamper resistant or you can't brute force these to get mechanisms in place. We'll punch OK there. And this is where we're actually seeing our defense now against that adversary in the middle attack. Doesn't make a big song and dance about it, but it says, hey, something went wrong. We don't recognize this site. Well, why doesn't it recognize the site? It's because when I was the user, I registered that security key against Microsoft Online, against Entra. That's our kind of safely attested partner. If we draw our eyes up to the URL bar, you'll see that domain name that does not match what we registered the passkey to. So you can, I'm going to simplify here, but you can kind of think of it as doing a type of DNS or domain name health attestation check, not a million miles away from what would also protect you through when you're browsing on websites through things like HTTPS, same type of technology. So that's what the user experiences. Just looks like an error, but we get a ton of security value on the back of that. Now let's head back to Evil Jinx and see what it found. I'll punch in that sessions command again. And sure enough, I get a password, but no tokens, nothing like that. And again, even if I, as the adversary, I took that user and I tried to get that password, uh, I couldn't proceed much further, right? Because it's still going to ask me for that 502 key. And in some scenarios, you'll learn about in other videos we produce about temporary access passwords. In a real mature conditional access environment, you might not even be able to get that password because we're never even going to prompt the user for the password. So hopefully this video has been informative to you. And if you're interested in more content like this, you might want to check out this video we've previously done on common conditional access mistakes.